Good afternoon, one of all. It's Peter from the Community Room. Uh, I've got to do a, a video that I don't ordinarily do. Uh, I've, uh, I'm going to share with you some uh, m my gains from the recent record uh, fairs that I've been to. I've been to two in the last couple of weeks. One last weekend uh, and here in Glebe in Sydney and also at Glenwood. Uh, um, the Glenbrook, sorry, not Glenwood, Glenbrook, uh, up in uh, the Blue Mountains, uh, the foot of the Blue Mountains as well. Um, I, I picked up a, quite a few things uh, recently. I have a total of about 21 albums. Uh, things that have just caught my eye. Nothing really spectacular, but the things that just catch my eye for what for one reason or another. So I start off first with the uh, half a dozen that I got from Glenbrook last weekend. Firstly is an Elvis Blue Hawaii original Australian. Now I haven't had a chance to play these yet, but I'll just show them uh, reasonably quickly what they are. This is an Australian mono uh, of Blue Hawaii. Uh, it's got the black and silver original label. I think I don't know if it's the first person or not, but something I'll have to find out a bit later on. But that's Blue Hawaii by Elvis. Another Elvis LP that I picked up was uh, Gold Records Volume 3. And again, um, I've got another black and silver RCA. That's a, a, a Volume 3 hit album. It's got things like it's now or never on it. Um, Stuck on You, Surrender, Are You Lonesome Tonight on here. Little Sister, Good Luck Charm are all here. Uh, this is also a mono. Uh, if you're wondering why I buy mono, you may know that I've got two turntables. One has got a mono cartridge, and I've been buying records specifically for that uh, to be able to use on that turntable. Next is uh, a Nick King Cole LP. This is a UK press. Uh, quite a nice one. Got the original sleeve as well. Looks like the sleeve is period accurate. Uh, this one was issued in 1967, I believe, because it's got pet sounds on the inner sleeve. But this one's actually quite interesting. It's also uh, a That Kid Cole album. But this uh, is actually one that's a South African press. Uh, and the back of the record has got a label on there which says Made in Southern Rhodesia. Now, which is interesting provenance. There's also a name on that, which has got uh, Lusaka, Zambia. So there's some interesting provenance on this particular album. I think it maybe just partly why I bought it. Uh, it's a, uh, a green capital label as well. Okay. I played part of this. It sounds quite nice. Again, in mono. Okay. But yeah, this. Uh, that kind of thing is interesting to me when you see records from overseas from different countries, some different um, exotic countries, I suppose, would you say that? It's exotic in a way. This one is um, the Joe Jackson Jump and Jive, which I've never owned. This is uh, Joe's um, delving into swing uh, jump music, uh, heavily influenced by Louis Jordan, um, Cab Calloway, and the like. Okay, quite interesting album. Um, yeah, it's a fun album, I suppose, as well. Uh, it's credited to Joe Jackson jumping driver as a band, so not specifically just Joe himself. It's an Australian AMM. And the last one from Glenbrook, uh, Glen, Glenbrook, yes, was a uh, Japanese Santana Abraxas. Now, it's got a gatefold, and it's actually quite a nice sounding album. I actually did this, got this for a very nice price. Uh, in very very nice condition uh, There is a surface mark on on the record, but um, Nothing that affects play thankfully enough or nothing too great anyway So, that, so that I can live with it. It's a very nice press indeed. So that's that one So that was my haul last week uh, on the public holiday Monday we had here in, here in Sydney uh, At Glenbrook record fair that was from Revolve Records up there. So shout out to them Last Saturday, uh, a couple of days back, um, we had the record, big record fair at Glebe. A lot, a bigger affair, uh, quite a number of sellers there. I don't 
quite ripped them about who all the sellers were that I bought these from. I will try and name them where I can. Um, I'm going to try and do these in alphabetical. Um, but the last three uh, won't be. Okay. So, firstly, um, these are things that have all caught my eye. Again, for one reason or another. Um, a number of Brubex that I've picked up. Uh, Dave Brubex here, and Jay, Jay and Kai at Newport. This is a original Coronet Australian. Don't know the year. Not had a chance to play it yet. But um, quite a nice one. It's a shared album uh, between the Dave Brubeck Quartet and the JJ Johnson Co Winning Quintet. Okay, so anyway, it's that one. Uh, the next one is another Brubeck called Brubeck Quartet Gone with the Wind. Again, another original Australian. It's uh, on the on the octagonal coronet label. Quite a nice label indeed. Again, a mono as was the previous one. Pardon the glare on the cover. Uh, another Brubeck from a different seller. Actually, I'll go to the next one, which is from the same seller. Uh, called Southern Scene. It's got a, a bunch of later ones, it's got a, a round label. Um, this is Southern Scene, uh, Brubeck Quartet Trio and Duo. And as I said, I've not had a chance to play these yet. Uh, and this one is from a different seller uh, called the Jazz Goes to Junior College. And I know there's an album called Jazz Goes to College, which I've got on CD. As part of a five CD box, I've got also that uh, Gone with the Wind. I've got that on CD as well. But for the most part, these are albums that I don't have on uh, previously, uh, except for the Santana or the Japanese one attracted me. But I, I do have an Australian as well. That so yeah, um, that's Brubeck from the same seller as the other Brubecks. I've got. Um, hang on a second. Give me a sec, we'll go with uh, Yellow Swings on Verve. It's on the Australian Verve label. Quite a nice label. I'm guessing this is also a mono. It's got an MGV catalog number. Got a name on the back, Rockland Smith. Hello if you're there. <laughs> uh, if you're still around. Uh, this is quite nice of an album. Um, Ellis Swings Lightning. And then a French Sinatra Nice and Easy, Mono. That one was Mono as well, I'm guessing. Uh, this one is Nice and Easy, a capital Mono. Let's try and press on that rainbow label. So you see there's a theme here with mono records, but uh, as you said, I've got the mono turntable with a, a Grotto mono cartridge, uh, MC Plus, uh, which is something I've had for quite a while. And it's actually quite good to have when you're playing mono well pieces, but particularly older ones, where the surface noise can be greatly reduced um, playing it on mono. Okay, from a seller called A to Z Records in Gladesville, uh, which I've discovered recently, my partner, Kate lives over that way, and uh, right near her is a, a, a new record store that's opened in the last month or so. So, Pete at Glade uh, A to Z, he was at the record fair. Hi to you. I picked up three. I was there a couple of weeks back and I saw a couple of LPs. Uh, I don't ha didn't have any JK Kale on LP before. I'm going to turn that around. Um, but this is Oki. I believe from around 1974 and shelter. Perhaps so. Um, not familiar with the tracks on here. Um, apart from the title track, this crying, it's all over there. Uh, these are, that's just from 74, it's Oki. And Troubadour. Which has got uh, cocaine on here. Probably the most famous of his tracks, I'd say. Covered by any number of people, including Eric Clapton. 
And this was a single, I was actually going to call it a single of it as well. Uh, that's it all. And then also another album I didn't have before, Eric Clapton's first solo album, which is self-titled. And this actually features uh, Delaney and Bonnie. I remember uh, Katie, uh, uh, Katie Court, um, I can't remember sorry, the name of the channel, but uh, she was talking about Delaney and Bonnie earlier today. And this, actually, this album has got uh, Delaney and Bonnie on it, um, as well as Carl Radel and Jim Gordon and Bobby Whitlock, Bob Keyes as well, really cool if on vocals as well, uh, Bobby Keyes, Leon Russell, right? So, uh, quite a number of noble people on this thing. Uh, of course, uh, Whitlock, Keyes, uh, Whitlock, Radel and Gordon would go on to, uh, would go on, they were from the Lonely Bonnie's band, they would go on to be in Derek and the Nominees with Eric as well. So, that's the back cover there. A few other notables there. I think that's Bonnie on the, on the ladder. Yeah. There's that. Right, there's that one. Okay. Now, from uh, another seller, a couple of sellers, another seller yesterday, whose name I don't recall. Um, about three. Now, this is firstly a Japanese Ring Drawing Sound Homegrown. I've got, the, I've got the OB inside the album. Unfortunately, it's split, and uh, so I, I haven't, I've decided to put it inside the cover. But it's a Japanese press of uh, Homegrown by Ring Drawing Sound on Capital. Like so, actually put the uh, Japanese lyrics as well, and I've just dropped the Obi, which I'll pick up later. Uh, pardon me a second. That's the Obi that goes with it, and also from the same seller, a Japanese trapeze album. Now I saw Glenn Hughes in concert last Thursday night at a uh, place called The Factory. About 500 other people, small theatre. Great, great show. Absolutely tremendous show. I didn't have a lot of great expectations with it, but actually I was very pleasantly surprised and it was just fantastic. Glenn was an amazing voice. And his screams and his band are just sensational. Anyway, um, I found this trapeze album. Uh, this is the band that Glenn Hughes was in before he joined Deep Purple. This was from 1973. So I think this was actually the last album that he recorded with that band before going on to Deep Purple. So there's Glenn on the back there. So I've not had a chance to listen to it. Looking forward to playing it. Okay. Uh, and the last one from the same seller. Now this is quite good with the pricing on, on a lot of these albums, the, the, the Brubecks particularly were all rather cheap. Some of them are a little bit more expensive. Um, you were right here, Firefly, which I never owned. So I found that as well, thought I'd grab that. Got the gatefold. This has got John Norton on vocals. This is uh, the, um, this may be the first or second album featuring John Norton. I know there was Innocent Victim as well. Inner sleeve, it's on the bronze label, Australian one. Okay, now the final three are from another seller based in Canberra whose name escapes me. But I was very impressed with the pricing on these records, they are very consistent and not outrageous. Now, albeit these are all uh, wax time doll um, label, which I believe are European labels of that reissue um, material that's in public domain. Uh, some people have debated that the quality is a bit, eh, eh, but they're not audio file. I've not listened to them. And these are all uh, 50s era rock and roll, which I'm not overly worried anyway. So they're all gonna be pretty much mono. There might be a stereo one in here. This on the doll label, this is Dale Hawkins. Again, these have all caught my eye. This one's actually got a gatefold. Right. Not that interesting, but anyway. But um, 
It's on the doll label. It's 180 gram vinyl. And I'm assuming it's going to be mono. Pardon me for that. Um, it got the the uh, hub sticker on the, on the there as well. 180 gram vinyl. There are some bonus tracks on the album. I remember seeing this in Time of Records years ago. Uh, I think it might have been a reissue of the original. Uh, also from the same seller, Ronnie Hawkins. Again, I've never owned any Ronnie Hawkins. Um, we all know that um, the band he had, the Hawks, uh, evolved into the band, though there's only one member of that on here at this point, it's Lee Von Helm. Uh, the other guys aren't in the band just yet on this album, but um, talk about you know, Robbie Robertson, Richard Van Wells, Garth Hudson, and uh, and Rick Danker aren't on here, okay? But Lee Von is, and I believe there's a, there's a few bonus tracks on here as well. This is a 16-track uh, album. This has got one, two, three bonus, four bonus tracks on here. Okay, it's rockabilly, I believe. I, um, based on what his style was going to be. Looking forward to playing this as well. This is on Wax Time, and this is actually a stereo press. Right. And lastly, I'm going to show you. A reissue of Rui Orbison's Rock House album, which was originally a Sun Records release. It's uh, Direct Metal Marshes. I think also that other one, Ronnie Hawkins, with DMM. Yeah, that's the DMM as well. Direct Metal Marshes. Okay. Uh, also on Wax Time. Um, this is Hi Fi, I'm guessing, Mono. It's uh, a kind of retro kind of label on that. It was originally a Sun Records release, which I think like Devil Doll and Ubi Doobi, Claudia Chan here as well. Um, Rock House is kind of love. Has not go, 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 unfortunately. But anyway, um, but yeah, that's Blue Opposition at the Rock House. Again, another Wax Time reissue, a European release. Um, this is from 2016. So there you have it. That's my haul, my hauls from the last two weekends. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any questions, just feel free to leave a comment. I um, uh, hope you like what you see. Like and subscribe. Uh, ring the bell for the notification. And uh, thank you for watching. Um, and take care, everybody. Bye bye.